Good there we right go. There. There's one on my outside board there. Whew, that board went back pretty good. <laughs> it didn't take long. What, a matter of <laughs> five minutes we've been in the water maybe? Yes, sir. Hey, my name's Jake Romanek and you're watching Fishing 4 on 1 television. You know, if you've watched the show this year and this season, you've probably seen me in my rain gear. We're not going to change it up this week. It's cold. We're on Lake Erie. It's fall time and it's time to catch walleyes. You know, the one thing about fishing in the fall on Lake Erie that's really changed in the last five years is that we have just a ton of eater-sized fish in the system now. So it used to be when you came out here in the fall to catch walleyes, you may only catch like seven or ten fish, but they were all really big fish, and that's what it was known for. And these big fish are still out here, but there's a lot of eater-sized fish in the system too, which actually makes it more fun. Because when it's cold out, you just want to catch fish. So whether the fish are big or small, you know, if you stay out here and you sort through them, you're gonna catch those big fish. But these eater sized fish is a really good way to pass the time. This was a fairly short lead, Dad, so he's gonna be right here. He's here fast, huh? Well, well, that's not a nice fish. Not a bad fish. That's not a bad fish at all. Like I said, you're not gonna hear me complain about catching walleyes no. like that. That's no, a good one. We're gonna take a few of these home. Time to put some in the freezer, Dick. Well, there you go. That's a start. Not a giant, but a chunky, healthy fish. The cool thing about Lake Erie is this is just a walleye factory. I mean, these fish grow so fast in this system just because of the amount of forage that's in this system. You know that 2015, 2016 year class? We're catching these kind of fish right now and they're starting to get to those legal sized fish. A fish like this was just barely legal in the springtime and now he's plenty legal in the fall. So they grow fast in Lake Erie and we'll put a couple of these for a couple fish sandwiches, Dad. You know, there's a lot of great places to fish for walleye in the fall. We've always historically have come down to Lake Erie and enjoyed it a lot. One of the things that's happened here recently is there's a new contest, a little local big fish contest that takes place in the Ohio waters of Lake Erie called the Walleye Fall Brawl. And it's just a little bit more incentive to come here. The fishing's always good in the fall. We always look forward to coming here. But the cash and prizes that this fall brawl kicks out are amazing. You can win a free boat motor trailer, plus huge cash prizes as well on top of that. So there's great incentive to come here because not only is the fishing great, you might just catch a fish big enough to qualify in the fall brawl. Uh, this is year number seven for the Walleye Fall Brawl. Obviously our biggest year yet. We started out seven years ago, roughly 50 some guys uh, entered into a little, little pool bet we had. This year we topped out at 37.95. Five, six years ago we'd be able to go to the ramps. We'd be out on a, any given night during the week. We'd have six, eight boats out this year we would get out two hours before dark and two of our big ramp areas couldn't even find parking spaces. Kind of looked like a perch pack out there on the water. City of lights at night. 
You know, a lot of people make the mistake of putting their boat away in the fall, they winterize it and they're done fishing maybe around deer season. But quite honestly, some of the best fishing of the year takes place after deer season. Here in Ohio waters, quite commonly, you can fish all the way through the month of December. So there's a lot of great fishing to be had much later in the season than you might imagine. All right. Let's see, finally my side lights up a little bit here, Jake. I like when that happens. Looked pretty good, Dad. Well, I'll tell you what, it did, uh, did go back nice and fast, so that's, a, that's always a good sign. And you got a chance of winning a fully rigged fishing boat, plus they've got cash prizes up in the neighborhood of $5,000. I mean, it is a really cool thing. That's the good news. The bad news is you better be getting big fish, because in order to be in the top 10 in the fall brawl, you gotta have fish over 12 pounds, don't you, Dick? Yeah, absolutely, it's and, a big, uh, big fish. So it is just a big fish contest, but it, what it does is it incentivizes people. It gives them another good reason, like, like you need a good reason to come to Lake Erie to catch walleye, but it gives you another reason to come out and have fun and extend your walleye fishing deep into the fall. The last day of the fall brawl is early uh, December, so it's all through the month of, most of October, all the month of November, in uh, the first few days of December is where it runs annually. Great little event, a lot of fun to participate. Oh, just a little wally, look at this guy. I'm just gonna ollie open in here. Just a little guy. Not a fall brawl fish. <laughs> Definitely not a fall brawl fish, but you know what? Doesn't bother me because uh, I enjoy eating walleyes and that. Uh, <laughs> okay, you just hold them out like yeah, that's that. That's right, you gotta hold them out there a little ways to make them look 12 months. <laughs> I don't got the heart to kill that one though, Jake. Toss him back and let him grow up a little bit so he can be a little more representative. Special considerations provided by Eagle Claw. Proudly made in America since 1925. Additional considerations provided by Fishhawk Electronics. Trolling without a fishhawk is called boating. Well, that one looks a little better there. Come on, baby. Eat it. Yeah. <laughs> That's I how they're it. supposed to go back right there. That's yeah. how they're supposed to go back. I don't mind if I do. I think I'll release that one and maybe fight it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. My favorite sight in all the world is watching an offshore board go back, man. You watch that fly go, poof. It don't get any better. I could do that every day. You look at that rod and you can, you know, in the camera you're not gonna be able to hear this, but we can hear a little bit of wind blowing through the line, and a little hum on the line. The only way that happens is when that fishing line is pulled tight. That's a good feeling. I love it when that fishing line is pulled tight. Bowstring like tight. <laughs> Very cool. Oh, I got a, I got one on my side there, Jake. Oh, we got a double really going here. buried. Oh, mine boy. Just Mine just powered down. I tell you what, I'm gonna let, just go ahead and drag that for a second. I think you should take that, Dad. That's a good. That looks way too good. Just you to think that one's too there. good, huh? I'll go ahead and trip wow, the board. Was... We're stacking our planer boards here so we can run multiple lines. And uh, and the beauty of this is what we can do is the way we've got our boards rigged, and we'll show you here in a second. We can trip them and reel that fish in without having to clear up any of my other inside lines. That really makes it efficient here, really efficient. Normally I'd take the board off for Jake. Look at you got one on your, yeah, on yeah, your middle board yeah, too. Yeah, we triple. got a triple header on right now. <laughs> Jake, you got a quality fish there. I'm gonna grab him with the net and then I'm gonna come back. And, and Not a giant, one. but definitely a good one, man. There's, there's something about these fall fish. They're chunky. There we go, they are keep moving. All got right. him in the scoop. Now you're on your own. I gotta go back and get mine here, buddy. <laughs> That's what you call a fire drill, Chinese fire drill. Hopefully mine is still hooked up, feels like he is. Yeah. Triple header, I guess we'll take that, won't we? We'll see what the, uh, how this all ends when the dust settles, how many of these come in the boat, but it's nice to get three, boat, you know, three bites like that, bang, bang, bang. So if you're gonna do this kind of fishing, you're primarily gonna be looking at crankbaits. Now there's other ways to catch these fish out here. You will see people doing other things and catching walleyes in the fall, but the vast majority of these fish are gonna be caught trolling crankbaits. And uh, not every crankbait works out here. There's just a handful that are effective. You're gonna you know, fish things like the 800 series reef runner, uh, Bandit, the 5 8 ounce Bandit is very good. Uh, the Deep Husky Jerk from Rapala is very, very good as well. Uh, Bay Rat lures are starting to get real popular. You've seen some of the, the deeper Bay Rat baits are getting real popular out here as well. So there's lots of options for lures. What all those lures have in common is they all have a subtle action. They're all minnow divers. Jake, I'm gonna let you give me a hand on this one. Yeah, I got it. Get that board Ooh. off. I can keep tension on this that fish. That is a heavy fish right there, Dad. Feels good. Definitely feels good. I got, got one on my inside board too right now, so. 
triple is three, that means we've got a quad on currently. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen this one yet. It's the worth water's putting just up murky with a cold. Oh, he's not that big a fish. He was just kind of hooked funny. That's why he looks like a surprisingly bigger fish. Crankbait got him on the side of the head there a little bit. So a good uh, eater size one. We'll take it. I tell my you, heart pounding for a sec. I tell you what, Dad. I'll let you get that one out of the net. Yeah, I think and you're I'll catch right. This one here. I think you're right about that one. If anyone's ever told you that trolling's boring, they're doing it wrong. There's a lot that goes into trolling. Um, you know, your speed, uh, how far back you got to put your lures to be successful. And once you get that pattern together and start catching fish, you know, we really never sit down hardly when it comes to, to trolling. We're rotating rods, trying to figure out a pattern. Once that pattern's figured out, you're catching fish. So of course you're not sitting down either. So it's a lot of fun. I think I'll just alley-oop this one, Dad. It's a good fish, but we'll give it a try. Oh, <laughs> that's flexing there. Right on the bitter edge of being able to alley-oop. Not a bad walleye though. <laughs> wow, take a look at that screen right now. That's when you know you're in them. This place is a walleye factory. I think that's gonna end the triple. That, that quad actually did come off, that one on the inside there. That's a little bit deeper line, but got one on the floor, one in my hand, one already in the box that we just put in there. So one, two, three, makes a triple. One other little thing that we're doing here, we're putting a little pro cure on our baits. This is called super gel and it happens to be the gizzard shad formula. The reason we picked that is because there's just a ton of gizzard shad in the Lake Erie system right now and in the fall, these fish really key in on gizzard shad. It's a greasy style of fish scent. What it does is it puts a good scent stream in the water and in this murkier water we're fishing in, it really seems to be making a difference. Right now I've got um, certain baits that I've got pro cure on and certain baits that don't have any pro cure. The only ones that are getting bit are the ones with pro cure. That, is impressing me. All right, time to go ahead and hitch up this uh, offshore board. It's really a simple process. All I do is grab my fishing line and I'm just gonna wrap my finger around it a few times. And what I've done is I've just created a loop. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the release and put the line right inside the release. So now I've got the board attached to the front. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the back of the board and I'm gonna put the line in the second release. This is one that's got a pin in it, so you have to put the line all the way to the back of the pin. Now it's pretty tight in here, so the flag won't work properly. So what I do is I just pull a little bit of slack line here, and now the tattle flag can function as well. So what's gonna happen when we catch a fish, I give it a little tunk of the rod, and the line will pop free here, and it's just dangling by the back release. Once that board releases, instead of it pulling out to the side, it just slides to the back of the boat, and that way we don't have to clear our other lines. We can be able to reel that fish in without reeling in our middle or our inside board line. It's slick, it works very easy, and like I said, the offshore board comes factory rigged, ready to do this. Special considerations provided by Bait Rigs Tackle, America's innovator of fine fishing products. Additional considerations provided by the Ultimate Sports Show Tour, Michigan's premier sports shows. You've heard us reference precision trolling a few times. And essentially what precision trolling is, it's a company that tests how deep crankbaits and other trolling gear dives below the surface. So if you manipulate your lead lengths, you can manipulate your depths and literally dial your lures right into the depth of where you're seeing fish. Well, people ask us all the time, how do we determine what types of lures and what types of devices get tested for precision trolling? And the answer to that's really simple. It's the people who buy the app who call us and write us and text us and say, we'd really like to see you test this. Well, that's where this whole new snap weight data that we're working with now has came from. A lot of requests from guys from Lake Erie that wanna know how deep does a diving crankbait go when you put it in conjunction with a sinking trolling weight like a snap weight. So what we did is we took and standardized it. We took a 50 foot lead to a specific lure and then we put another 25 foot behind that and tested it. We put another 25 foot behind that and tested it and kept doing that until we got all the way out to 150 foot total lead. We did it at a 1.5, we did it at a 2.0, and we did it at a 2.5 mile per hour speed. And then took all of that data collectively and put it into the precision trolling app. So there's lots of different popular crankbaits that you can use with snap weights to get them deeper. So the big advantage of a snap weight is that you can get your lures deeper and you can keep your lead length shorter. That helps you get more fish in the boat. You know, when it comes to fishing in the fall, you'll hear people say that you use subtle action baits a lot. 
Well, subtle action means a lot when it comes to fishing in the fall because early in the fall, we'll use baits that actually have a fair amount of action, like this 800 series reef runner here. It's subtle in the fact that it's not like a fast action summertime crankbait, um, but this bait actually has a fair amount of action. When that water's anywhere from like mid 50s, maybe even getting down into the, the mid 40s, this 800 series reef runner works very, very well. But once that water starts getting a little bit colder, we drop down to a more subtle bait, which would probably be something like this, this number 12 deep diving husky jerk. This bait has a lot less action than that 800 series reef runner, but still has a considerable amount of action. Now when that water gets really cold, and I'm talking about just about to the freezing point, we'll use a bait like this Perfect 10 here. And this Perfect 10 literally is the definition of subtle action. It has very little action. When you put this bait in the water, it almost looks like you're dragging a stick behind. But really, that's what it takes to get these fish to bite. So when you think about subtle action baits in the fall, you gotta look at that water temperature to determine what bait needs to work on that given day. Well, we got some good news and some bad news to share. The good news is we know approximately where our fish are. Um, we know where we started catching them, and now we've kind of trolled out of the school and we're not catching them much anymore. And if you look around us, it's pretty bumpy out here today. It's too rough just to turn around and troll back into the wind. So the bad news is we have to pick up all of our gear, run back upwind, and reset up again. It's faster to do that, it's more efficient, and we'll be able to actually control our speed a little bit better. I think it'll work much better for us. Now that we know where they're at, now that we know where they're at in the water column and what bait they're biting, it's all downhill from this point. We're going to catch a bunch of fish today. I don't think anyone ever taught that fish not to play with his food because he did not hit that the way that a walleye is supposed to hit it. Just nice and slow that board went back and then kind of shot back forward. I don't know if it's a big one or not, but he sure didn't hit it with any energy. Go ahead and pop that board off. It's the other nice thing about releasing your boards like that. You can easily take the board off by yourself. You know, when you're trolling, you got all these lines in the water. My dad's setting another rod right now. He's getting that in the water, and I was able to take the board off by myself, no problem. Holler if you need a net there, Jake. I can help you out if I need a net. Not a bad fish, Dad. Okay, I can help you with that. Kind of. That fish. There, there we go. And we're going to eat walleyes good tonight, son. We just got in this little bit dirtier water, these fish are biting, but look how, how faded the color is on that fish. It doesn't take very long in dirty water and these fish just change right colors. It doesn't even look like the same kind of fish, but from a lot of color in clear water, it's almost faded out in this dirty water. You know, one of the most fundamental tools when it comes to crankbait trolling is actually a line counter reel. Let me flip this in the drink and I'll start getting this crankbait out. A line counter reel is super important for a couple reasons. Number one, it just allows you to put a pattern together. If I catch a fish 50 back, I can take another rod with a line counter reel, put that bait 50 back and catch fish. But the lead length is the most important thing because that tells you how deep your crankbait is going. What I can do is I can go on my phone, I can pull out my precision trolling app, and I know that if I put this bandit 50 feet back, I'm about 13 feet down. When I'm looking at my Lorance graph, that's about where those fish are. So I can get that bait right in the right zone. When I put that full pattern together, I get multiple rods catching fish, and it's a way to put a lot of fish in the boat really quick. So if you don't have a line counter reel, you're gonna wanna invest in a few. And no matter what brand you choose, you gotta remember that you kinda get what you pay for when it comes to a line counter reel. You start looking at prices, there's some very, very expensive ones, and there's some very, very cheap ones. The components of the reel themselves really make up those more expensive reels. So if you're looking to buy an investment, spend the extra money, buy some high dollar line counter reels, you'd really be glad you did. Special considerations provided by Trailmaster Trailers, quality custom boat trailers. Additional considerations provided by Procure, ruthlessly effective bait suds. Hey, you know, if you travel into Port Clinton and you got a group of guys and you're doing a little fishing, you might want to check out a place called Bay Edge Townhouses. Really nice condo setups here. They've got everything that you could possibly want from a fisherman's standpoint. You've got a fish clean station here. There's decks so you can have a grill out there if you want to do a little cookout. There's a gas station right close by, and there's a bait shop close enough you can cast to it. So what else could you ask for if you're in Port Clinton looking to do a little fishing? Fish right here. We're getting ready to go back up for another pass. I don't know if it's the right call to go right now or if we... I need to stick around a little longer, but I picked my inside board in and my middle board just ripped back, but it's all right. We got a really good idea where these fish are, so we'll be able to go back up for another pass and be able to put more fish in the boat. You know, Dad was talking about going downwind. To me, there's a lot more to it than just going downwind. 
I really want to go perfectly downwind and the reason for that is I want my boards pulling off the same way. If you're kind of quartering the seas a little bit, what we call it is crabbing. And what happens is your boards on one side are pulling at the right speed, your boards on the other side are almost not hardly moving at all. So when you're going downwind, line your boat up so all your boards are pulling at the same speed, that way you're catching fish on both sides of the boat. I'd help you, Jake, but I got a fish on my side too. All right. Got it unhooked here. You've, uh, you've done this enough, you, uh, you really don't need any help. Where you do really want to help a guy with an inline planer board is if you've got a big fish on, it really is nice to have another guy to take that board off. That way the fisherman doesn't have to stop, doesn't have to give that fish any slack whatsoever, and it only takes a second to take the board off so you can keep that fish coming to the boat nice and smooth and steady. So but these are average fish, if one of these gets away, it's no big deal. Um, but if we get a real big fish on, we'll get a little bit more serious about this. What do you got there, Jake? Not a bad fish. I'm going to help you out with that one. I think I'll just alley-oop them down. It's a good one. Yeah. Really flexing the alley-oop there. Oh. <laughs> Go ahead and pull them up here. Take a scan of that fish, man. That's gorgeous. Gorgeous Lake Erie walleye. They don't get any better for the table than that one right there. Oh, baby. Kind of neat. It's not a very big fish, and it eats a great big crankbait. That's a kind of an important notice, you know, thing to take notice of. Is in the fall, walleye tend to feed on bigger forages than you might expect. So even a two-pound fish like this has no problem whatsoever slurping down this big reef runner. These bigger baits really do catch all kinds of fish, small, medium, and large. <laughs> fish is just thumping, Dad. We've had a few that we didn't need a landing net for today, but I'm guessing you need a landing net for this one, huh? I'm thinking so. The way that board <laughs> went back. And it's just been solid weight this entire time, you know. Those big walleyes, they don't necessarily fight hard, but it's solid weight and boom, boom, big head shakes, oh, yeah. you know. I love that feeling. Now well, that line's staying nice down. It's straight. staying down yeah. too, that's nice. You just never know what you're gonna catch here in Lake Erie. Oh yeah, oh. that's what we're looking <laughs> yeah. for. That's good fish, man, that's good fish. Mm. There you go, I got from there. There you go, Jake, <laughs> not bad. <laughs> What a nice fish. <laughs> hey, my name is Jake Romanek, and you've been watching Fishing 4-in-1. If you get a chance, make sure you come down to Lake Erie in the fall. Sign up for that fall brawl, because you never know when your next fish could win you a lot of money. We'll see you here, same time, same place, next week. It's a good fish, Dad. <laughs> Closed captioning is provided by Fishhawk Electronics. Fishing 4-in-1 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, Yakima Bait, Starcraft Marine, Jay's Sporting Goods, Cisco Fishing Systems, Smooth Moves, Precision Trolling Data, Niagara Falls USA, Motor Guide Electric Motors, and Lawrence Electronics. That's what I'm talking about. Some beautiful Lake Erie walleye. Lots of these today. Get down here and get you some. Man, that's a lot of fun.